See, these were yours. I don't have my shoes. Are you I, serious? Yeah. You no, sure they these aren't them? Why are See, these those here? Are the, they were in his slot, but the, your shoes... Can't find your shoes? No. Brown shoes, yeah. they had tin, tin laces. Well, sort of, they have, uh, like, bubbles on the sole. Oh, on, like on the sole. Yeah. Like a, yeah. It looked like yeah, a yeah, soccer yeah, shoe. I know, I know, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know, yeah, I know. The they were right thing. next to yours. I, I put them up there by mistake. Guy took them. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, what about his shoes? Why don't you wear his shoes? Are these his shoes? Yeah, oh, you want to take those? Thank you. Yeah. Here's That's what to do. Here, hold on, out. hold on. No. <laughs> Write down your name and number. What kind of guy would take somebody else's shoes? Hi. This is Jeff Garwin. I'm with Susie Essman. Yeah, so you just heard our theme song. What do you think of it, Susie? I think it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Yeah, it's very Sinatra esque. Okay. La, 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 la. All right, let's start the show. Okay, episode two, two. Yep. season one, Ted and Mary. Let me just start by telling this little anecdote. Ted and Mary knew Larry because they both have had, had houses in the summer on Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. And when Larry first did the first hour special pilot, he showed it to Ted and Mary and Ted thought it was the worst thing he'd ever seen. You've heard him tell this yeah, story. Of course. He thought it was just like, he was like, oh my God, good luck with this, rolling his eyes. And then here he is in episode two uh, of the season. And by the way, we'll get to this later, but in this episode, he's kind of playing something that he's not normally used to playing, which is he's the good guy. He's being uh, magnanimous. Yes. You know, throughout the episode. His character Joy has changed. Yeah, evolved. very much so. Mm -hmm. And by the way, he does say heaven. In real life. When describing something. Well, that's why Larry will frequently take the reality yeah, of somebody. And, and go with it. So they, it starts out in a bowling alley, which yep. I'd like to know how many times they actually well, bowl. Well, bowl together, I don't know. But I think that Larry probably, but you know, there's those interesting questions I ask him. We're talking about photography. He says, oh, I've never used a camera. What? As a matter of fact, I've never taken a picture. And of course, I lose my shit. Yeah. And we go into detail on it. And he tells me he's never used a camera. Never Even put money when he in was a, a jukebox. Kid with a brownie nope, never or... put money in a jukebox. So he's a very unusual being. <laughs> so Monday, I think we need to ask him if bowling. he's ever been bowling. You know, because bowling I, is fun. Not for me. I hate it. Oh, I like it. I hate bowling. Maybe it's because I'm they call me gutterball Joe. So they're That's bowling, my nickname. I'm gutter ball and they're Joe. having a good time. Yes. But I'm shocked that he even wore those disgusting bowling shoes. You remember when you were a kid, you went into the bowling alley and they'd spray the inside of the yeah, shoes? Yeah, but everybody wore them. Oh, that's disgusting. But you wore them when you were a I young did, lady. I did, of course, I but know, I'm surprised, so. knowing Larry as I do, that he would have ever worn those shoes. But yeah. again, um, and they're having a great time. And then he goes to get his real shoes and they're gone. His campers. Right. right. They still, still make campers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy loves campers. By the way, I want to also say with Mary Steenburgen and Ted Danson on the show, first off, love Mary Steenburgen and everything she's ever Terrific. been in. My favorite movie that she did at that point was a movie called Time After Time uh -huh. with her first, first husband, husband Malcolm, uh, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. McDowell. About to say Roddy McDowell. Yeah. No, um, no, no. And wrong, then, but, totally but wrong Ted McDowell. Danson, that was somebody to me where I was. I remember once seeing him. He was ahead of me. Drive on to the Paramount lot mm -hmm. as I'm coming in. And he had a, a Lexus LS 400, first or second year, this big uh, Lexus sedan. It was very early on in Lexus. And I thought, look at him. Ted Danson, he's got it all. I've told him this. And I... I would I would look at him, be around him, like, wow, I'm talking to, you know, you're the voice. Yeah. Is like, I'm talking to Ted Danson. I'm having a conversation with Ted Danson. And I would also think, I'm doing a scene with Ted Danson. I would say those But we things. always love days when Ted comes. Oh, because he's a joy. He's a joy to but, work with. But you with. hear that term, and a Mary joy. And Mary, too. But Mary's but, not yeah, in it No, no, but they're both so, you know. But Ted, Ted's my favorite actor I've ever worked with. That I can put it that far. But even to this day, when I'm doing a scene with him, I can't believe I'm doing a scene. That you're acting with Ted Danson. Yeah, I'm acting with Ted Danson. I just, yeah, it was very exciting for me. And I don't lose that. I still have it today, the excitement of of Ted Danson. So when, when, By the way, that, that's a great book. The, the excitement, excitement of, of Ted, Ted Danson. Danson. So when, when Larry goes to get his shoes and Ted says to him, and clearly these couples are just getting to know each other. They're not friends yet. You know, later mm -hmm. uh, later on, we know what happens with yeah. Ted and Cheryl. But um, Ted says And to our him, listeners do. 
They do, of course. Yeah, so we're not spoiling yeah, anything exactly. at this uh, point. If you're listening assuming, to the show yeah, and you've not fans. watched, if not all, most of the Curb episodes, then we're really mistaken. The only thing we don't want to spoil is what we're shooting now. That's, right. that's all. Um, and but can Ted, you imagine someone listening to this show and never having watched Curb? That they, would be they surreal. They like you, and they're just sort of jumping on board. Well, whatever. And they say to themselves, I have to check out this show that they call We'll Curb. take all kinds. Yes, I know. Okay, go uh, ahead. And Ted says to him, does this happen to you a lot? And again, this is setting up, this is Larry. Things happen to Larry in real life, not Larry, right. not Larry show Larry. Right, right. Things have always happened to Larry that don't happen to anybody else. Well, by the way, I guarantee, guarantee this premise did not happen to him, but somebody lost his shoes. That in was some a, way. In some way. Right. There was a shoe problem, and he came up with the premise after the shoe problem happened. And then there's the heaven thing. That Tessa, yeah, Ted saying heaven is just so him. It's the so other funny. thing that struck me was— By the way, let me just say for our listeners, Ted Danson will describe things from gum to a, a door as heaven. As heaven. Yeah. The other thing that struck me about it was when he says that Ted asks a lot of questions about personal hygiene. <laughs> Now, personal hygiene is an issue with Larry. Oh, that's You a- see it throughout all the episodes. We see it in real life. He is a personal hygiene he likes awareness clean. person. Well, by the way, we were discussing, we were filming a scene, and we got into a conversation about using poo humor. I'll refer to it as that. Scatological. Scatological humor. And he doesn't like it. Neither I know do Letterman I. doesn't like it. And I know I don't like I it. I don't get And either. what do the three of us have in common? We're men. All right, but anyhow... Um, I don't like it either. It always feels low to me. Oh, it's so low, so easy. But anyhow, he likes things that are pristine, clean, no poop. And I'm talking about language. He'll say fuck. I'm not saying that. Which, by the way, when people do knockoffs of Curb, especially in the early days, they seem to think that what it is is a TV show you can swear on. That was the difference early on between us and any other show that was like us. Well, because it's on HBO. Also, it's not network. Right. But they would get shows on Showtime, wherever at that point was a cable show. That was the differentiation. It didn't happen for like three, four years. But they thought, oh, we'll just swear. And we only swear like when it's necessary. You swear like nobody's business. Yes, however, I've always felt that people think that that's what they're responding to in my character. And no, I don't think Sarima, that's correct. It's your character. I, 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 I think what so many people respond to about Susie Green is her comfort with her anger is what women respond to about her character. Not that she's saying, fuck you and fuck this. It's that she is so completely owning her anger, which is a very difficult thing for a lot of women. And that's what I, I own think. own their anger? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are most women angry? Well, most, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it I because think, of men? No, I think most people are angry. I think there's well, things that, that make us they, angry all the time. I know, but and I'm, I think women are have a built-in oppression there that they're angry about. Yes. I, and I think that Susie Green has given them permission to express their anger. Right. It's not the language. And again, the language is secondary. It's the content of the show that is really the thing that's edgy to me, not the language. It's the uh, content. Yo, Would by the way, it goes off the, yes. It goes off the contents, but that's just a funny thing to point out that no one would know about Larry, that he finds that kind of humor. Yeah, and And, and, and also bathroom habits, flossing habits, those are of great concern to him. Great concern. Yeah. Great concern. It's not that he won't use it, but he's not a person that sprinkles profanities throughout his conversation. Right. In general. No, I, by the way. I do way more than him. And so do I. I've yeah. got a, I've got a mouth that I say yeah. that crap all the time. And no, he does not. He generally doesn't. I mean, he does in a big way where I'll tell him a story and he'll go fuck them. You know what yeah, I mean? But yeah, yeah. Outside of that, but it's not. It's not yeah. part of his uh, of his dialogue. So they go bowling. Yep. And they have a great time. And yep. then Larry and Cheryl are home discussing the double date, yes. which I think it's a great great scene. Best. And it it just tells so much about their relationship. And again, this is in the beginning. You know, they, they're just finding it. Right. Um, you know, the, the idea. Well, by the way, you also have to add, because it's part of the show, that Ted and Mary invite Cheryl and Larry to go see, to go Paul, see Simon Paul Simon in concert. In concert, which Larry hems and haws over, which I'm surprised in the beginning, because I would think oh, he'd no, jump no, no. on Larry, that. Larry David, the, the real Larry David, which this is based on, uh, up until... Ten years ago, he didn't go see shows. He didn't shows. go, but he loves Paul Simon. 
I know, I know he does. Life. I know he does. Right? Um, but the whole idea that you can't be friends with a hetero, other hetero person, I, I think is a really interesting concept. You know, like I, a very close friend who you know, who I was extremely close friends with him before he was married. So I'm grandfathered in as a hetero woman and he's a hetero man. But once you're married, it's hard to make those relationships with they, the opposite they sex. They all pretty much have to be pre-existing. They have to be grandfathered in. You know, because if if you're friends with somebody and your significant other knows that you're friends with them and they actually are friends with them, but you try explaining a new person that you're having coffee Very with. Very difficult. Very difficult. You could say to Sari, I'm having dinner with Susie. She's fine. Yeah, but, but, but if I'm a new I person. Have, I have, I, but I, by the way, I have numerous uh, women friends uh, who Sari is all good with me. But I remember one time I mentioned somebody and uh, she wasn't too, you know. Well, and the mistake. And Marla would do the same thing. Yeah, you and know? I would do the same thing. And the mistake that, that Larry makes is he is way too, way too effusive about how terrific oh, Mary is. Oh, by the is. way, clearly what we're saying is a man with a crush, which I think That's is right. totally cool. That's right. Totally cool. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think he was planning on having an affair with her. I think No, he was, no, no. I know, but I think he was just tickled and couldn't get enough of her. And I know I felt that way about women, you know. Right. To the and point- I knew I'm not going to go for this. I'm married. I have a girlfriend. Whatever it is, I am not. But boy, oh boy, I'm, I'm pretty taken with this but person. But you know, I, I do think that being in a long-term relationship and having crushes and flirt, flirting somewhat are healthy. I think it keeps, it's an enlivening thing. When I first got married, I didn't know that it was okay to have You're crushes. You're not dead. No, but I know, but I purposely like had blinders on for a number of years in terms of I never opened up to that. And then the first crush that I had, I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. Yeah. I haven't felt this way. How fun. And there's a Didn't big mean- difference between having a crush and acting out on a crush. Well, it's not even ever a crush then. It's, it's beyond an a acting. Crush. It's an affair. Yeah. But he clearly has a crush on Mary. Yes. Clearly has a crush on Mary. Yeah. To the point where he becomes a different person. Yeah. He loves shopping. He yeah. loves cooking. He loves, yeah. you know, all of this kind of stuff. He said, Barney's, again, uh, Long lost dead Barney's, which we've used more than once. And he says it, it, it's heaven. He, that, that's how far he goes in his crush that he says to Mary, this jacket is heaven. Well, trying to jacket emulate heaven. Him. It's the same jacket that, that she's she has. wearing. Exactly. You know, try that with, with Cheryl. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like. Yeah. And, and, and Cheryl, Cheryl is so good. You know, Cheryl, you see in that scene where, where he's the, the subtlety of Cheryl's performance but and I how annoyed think, she is. I think, like everyone on the show, Except for me, everybody's gotten better. What do you mean, except for you? I was great from the get go. Okay. All right. So anyhow, but but Cheryl has developed so beautifully in her character. Yeah. Because her character is mostly subtle and mostly picks up the minutia. And that's a hard gig. But you saw it in that scene. You saw well, how well, well, saw, yeah. she was annoyed, but she wasn't really going there. Yeah, she had she sense wasn't... Of humor. She found it curious. Yeah, they found curious. it curious. Yeah. But the, it's the beginning of really seeing their relationship develop. And, you know, these things take time, especially when you're improvising and it's not written. You have to find it, you know. Right. The great line when they go to lunches and he's talking about how he cooks and she says, Mary Steenberg just says, that's so sexy. Yes. And then her mother gets mad at her. But then her mother says, this is the classic exchange of the F episode, which is... You know what? I am so blown away by how amazing were you today at Barney's? I've never seen That's a man true. take to shopping the way our Larry took to shopping. I love to shop. I love to shop. I've never known a man who loved to shop. You know what? Shop. I'm exhausted from picking up this from those shopping bags. I can't even lift my sandwich. <laughs> Your wife must be very proud of you. No, she's not. She's not. No, not even a little bit. Yes. No, she's not. Not at all. You know, I looked her up, Anne Haney, who played Mary's mother. I yeah. looked her up this morning, and this was the last thing she did. She died oh, really? right after that. Oh, I did not know yeah. that. She, she was died, a delight. She died young. She was only 67. I heard from Sari that she was a Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes, she was. Uh, she had a, she had a very nice career, but this was the last thing she did. Was this episode of Curb was the last professional thing that she right. did? There's something about that. That's oh that's no, sweet. it's really we were lucky. 
The other thing that struck me about when they're shopping in Barney's was Larry's vanity. He says to Mary's mother, did, did you like that? The sleeves were kind of puffy and the slip, but, and, and his vanity all about what See, he looks I like. I took that as he's trying to ingratiate himself he was. by saying that. But I don't, I think that was false vanity. I uh-huh. don't think he really worried about the sleep. And by the way, I think he took that stuff home. Unless he thought he was seeing Mary, that stuff would all stay in the closet. Oh, the stuff that he bought. That's stuff that he bought. Well, That's my well, he feeling. he attempts to return it. First off, his reaction, and I do think it was a bit extreme, to drinking Mary's mother's water. It was. But that being said, that is true, and he would have spit it out, just not that way. Because yeah. it was like, Larry, you drank poison. That's what it, the, the yeah. thing was. But that's also the nuances of the show, you know. But I love when he got it, came home. <laughs> he was going upstairs with the clothes and she said, I'm in here. Yeah. And he has to walk in with all the clothes. And at first he just talks about how he loves shopping, went shopping. Then he slowly adds that Mary was there with her mother. They had lunch and it's becoming clear to Cheryl, like what the fuck is all this? He had a date. Yeah. He went on a date with yeah. Mary. Yeah. Basically. So. And what if her mother wasn't there? She was. So, but you know. And it's by just... the way, he got Ted saying heaven in the episode when Ted, he had the great timing of Mary took the wrong bag and he gave his bag and they walk out in front and Ted is giving him subtle shit. Like he's, he doesn't have to say anything. And that is, that is the beauty of how the outlines are done. Right. You know, he could have not had that scene. Right. It, it, it appears to be gratuitous in a sense, right. but of course it's not. Well, by the There's way, well, so uh, much information. Ted sees that he has the same j- shirt jacket that Mary has. It's all the signs are there. Well, yeah, it's a beauty. But also in that scene, and I forgot what he's referring to, Ted says heaven. Yeah, it was something about, yeah, the, the when yard. they're at the trunk. Where yeah, the, the trunk. Yeah, yeah it's so something about the yard. But I also want to say that quite often on the show, and I'm privy to this, Larry will whisper to me, the scene will never make it into the cut. I'm not going to use it. Not using the scene. So there's a scene that's being filmed, and I know as I'm watching it, oh, this is never going to be in the show. I'll bet you it was less in the beginning than that's the Most case. certainly, yeah. because his radar is much stronger yeah. now. He might not have known that, you know. I mean, and also uh, these arcs are, are much more complicated now. Yes, early on they were This simple. was a very simple, you know, there was a couple of things I'm going on. I'm a big on. fan of the simple. I like the simple too. Yeah. But there was there was the the Barneys, which had the callback with the salesman. Yeah. There was the bowling, which had the callback with the shoes, and there was the Paul Simon. By the thing. way, I want to talk about the salesman. Okay. He's played by a gentleman named Tim Bagley, mm-hmm. who is one of the funniest men in town. I've known him since the eighties, the mid eighties. He was a groundlings guy. And he he was in the show because of my recommendation. Uh, that's the fun part at that point of the show, being an executive producer. It's like, oh, he will beat the shit out right. of everybody. And back then, by the way, I could just say, this guy's right for it. And Larry would have me talk about the person and he would agree. There wasn't a whole audition there process. Was, I, I will explain how that changed. There, well, there was. We auditioned people, but... If I wanted somebody, he trusted me, Mm -hmm. and he trusted Larry Charles. This is season two, especially, where, especially if Larry Charles and I doubled up on Larry, we could pretty much get anyone on the show. But Larry Charles and I took that with a great responsibility. We only wanted great people. It wasn't like getting your friends. Well, and and let me ask you this. I I just want to have a little sidebar here. Right. So he was a groundling. Would you call me your honor? Your honor. He was a groundlings guy. Yes. So- I feel that generally when you have improv actors, which Groundlings is an improv group for yes. people who don't know that, or stand-up comics yes. are way better at this than actors. Night and day. Now, occasionally you get a great actor like a John Hamm who's brilliant at improvising. Right. He's wonderful at improvising. But, but not always. There have been times that it's been oh, difficult. Been times that's the usual. Not Ted. Ted's fantastic. Ted is wonderful. But yeah. Ted at first was very uncomfortable with mm-hmm. it. He would talk to me about it. Now, what do I do? How is this going on? And I'll get to more of that later. But Ted was a natural. He just didn't realize yeah. he was a natural. Yeah. Uh, but, but in no. general, you agree with no, that? By the way, whenever we hire straight ahead actors, there's a large chance they're going to be flat mm-hmm. or they're not going to understand how the work is done. Mm-hmm. Because they're used to having scripts. Yeah, there was an actor, and I'll say it now because I don't want to talk about it when we talk about the episode. Very famous actor 
who was on Curb. And he was very broad. I mean, the tone of his performance was so broad, I couldn't figure it out. Now, this actor brought with him his family to set. Mm -hmm. And his children were telling me how much they love Curb Your Enthusiast. So he was doing it for them. But he'd never seen the show. Uh, and he was acting in a style that he thought comedy shows were yeah. in the style of. And so And some are, but not it, this. It was confusing. Larry Larry Charles, Larry David, and myself, after every take, were like completely confused. Because this is a great actor. And then once I figured it, I told them and they're like, Oh yeah. So that gave Larry Charles an idea. Who was of how directing to, that he, episode? Directing that episode, an idea of how to approach it, and he was successful in it because he was better. Years later, I run into this actor, and uh, I say, "I don't know if you remember me, Kirby." And then he goes, "Yeah, your boss uh, doesn't like other people being funny." Because he didn't understand comedy. And he thought because, you know, you know, he thought that was comedy. And oh, by the way, a lot of actors do what they think is comedy. Like you watch sitcoms that are popular with people watching it who think that's funny. I should laugh at that. I should like that. Well, and they, they're they, all actors. they indicate it. You, you know. know, but they're all actors on that show acting in a way that they think is funny with usually bad material. Right. So from all angles, nothing's funny. And in this case, I think we're doing something funny and this person just did not get it. Well, this the same person uh -huh. I ran into, I, I remember on Madison Avenue, and I, again, introduced myself, and I hadn't been there that day. And he said to me, I don't think your boss likes me. <laughs> and I said, why? And he said, because he didn't send me a gift after I did the, oh, the episode. Oh, this takes it to a whole other level. We, this who is a sends whole other... a gift? I mean, we have rap gifts after a whole season, right. but who sends a gift after an episode? Right. I've never heard Especially of that. Especially at that point, it yeah. was like, you do the gig, you go home. And by the way, if there's a gift sent to you at the end of the season... That's lovely. Like, you know, great. I just, got, I just did a show called Never Have I Ever for Netflix. And when I rap, nobody gave me anything. But about a month or so later, I got a nice... Gift, a wrap. Right. It was actually sneakers that I'll never wear. And they said, never have I ever on the back. But I've got them in it's the closet. A memento. By the way, contact me on my Instagram. You know, I, I check sometimes and uh, say you want them. By the way, here's the thing. They're size 14. What size are you? 14. Oh, okay. No, they, I'm not a size 11 and they gave me 14. So they're size 14. Oh, I might want those. Seriously? Yeah, I'll find out. All right, I'm okay. good with that. I, I find it strange, and I can't wait to hear why. But go ahead. <laughs> All right, let's go. So let's go back because I, I had my next note was the the Barney salesman. Yeah, that's that's you know, Tim Tim Bagley. He was terrific. And he knows how to do it. Yeah. And also, I want to point out. I and he knows how to build the anger, which is another thing yes. that people don't understand. That okay, he, but he's know. not angry yet. Yeah. He's at this point. He's helping he's Larry. He's confused. He's doing a favor for Larry. Usually, you have to order them ahead of time. That will bring up in a minute. Now, I have, I have something very interesting to point well, out. No, no, it has to be when in the show it happens. Okay. Yeah, okay, because it's coming I, I didn't up. know we had that rule, but that's fine. No, I'm there's good no, with that. By the way, I have my rules, you have your rules. Yeah. You want to talk about the ending up top? I don't care. So he buys, because his shoes had given to somebody else in, in the bowling alley. Right. Larry is in Barney's with Mary and her mother. Yes. And he buys another pair of these shoes, but he has to order them. They're not in stock. He right. has to special order them. Yeah, but then he gets a call that the fella who stole his shoes is at the bowling alley. Right. Larry rushes to the bowling alley. He gets told that's him. And he goes up and he says to the guy, hey, nice. He plays it slowly. Nice shoes. <laughs> and... <laughs> We, this, by the way, this is played by the guy who stole the shoes is Joe Liss, another person I shoehorned in. Joe Liss is one of the greatest improvisers that I've ever worked mm -hmm. with, ever watched. I'd say him, Dave Pasquese, and Dan Castellaneta in terms of my time at Second City. Those Here's three what guys. I think about Joe Liss, why I think he was so good. Because he didn't immediately go into this big argument thing. Well, by the way, that's the point. The yeah. key to that whole exchange is what Joe improvised. And I know he improvised this because I know when it was written, it was like, he didn't say this. So Joe says, really, your shoes? Well, he gave them to me. 
Larry goes, yeah, but you took my shoes. And he kept saying this two words. Nice shoes. Thanks. I think they're mine. You're kidding. No, kidding? No, they're my huh. shoes. They're your shoes? Yeah. How could they be your shoes? How could they be? Because that guy gave them to you by mistake the other day. Well, that's weird. That's weird? Yeah. What? What's weird? He would what? give me those shoes? No, that's not weird. What's weird is that you would put them on. That's what's weird. That's... Oh, I mean, it's not weird that he would give me these no, shoes? No, that's a mistake. And they're not my shoes, and he gave them to me. Yeah, that's a mistake. That's an honest mistake. That's a mistake. Yeah, what's weird is that you would take shoes that don't belong to you and put them on. That's weird. Or even weirder, it's like you left without even your shoes. That's not that weird. I had nothing else to wear. Oh, that would be, that'd be kind of weird. No, that, that's going to be weird for you now after I get the shoes back. That'll be weird. Oh, you want them back? Yeah, I do. Oh, oh okay. Wow. <laughs> They're comfortable shoes. Yeah, he, I know they are. He gave them to me. I mean, I don't know what he was thinking. He's a nut. Yeah. He's a little nutty, isn't he's he? Not, yeah. Yeah, I know. He's, he's a little not, crazy. He's just a little crazy. He's a little crazy. All right. Those are comfortable shoes. I'm so. glad you liked them. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Jeez. And everything that he said was weird, Larry shot down with logic. No, it's not weird that he gave you the shoes. It's weird that, that you, you took, took the them. shoes. Yeah. But it goes over and it doesn't build, which is unusual right. for an altercation. It's just, that's weird, Larry saying it. That's weird. And it was, to me, it was a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite scene in the episode, unequivocally. In terms of improvised scenes, what I want to see and what I hope is going to be there, that was classic and beautiful and i loved it and it made me think oh maybe we can do some damage here if we have more stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah so god bless joe liss still alive because normally you say god bless joe liss did joe pass no he did not no. pass but so know. he gets the shoes back he takes them to the shoemaker to have him fumigated yes which of course you have to do that right. and it's very and Larry. by the way i want to add this there's another little and we're coming to what i was going to say earlier the the shoe fella cobbler guy yeah uh, shoemaker. Said, the shoemaker. I said, I recognize you. What have I seen you in? You seem familiar. He was in um, uh, Planet of the Apes. Oh, really? Yes. He was like uh, the young boy ape guy who helped them leave. And he's a boy in the movie. He was an ape boy, a chimp. Or you whatever. recognized him and he was in the ape costume? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. And he was great. And he, I said I was having actually a garage sale. I'm on a show having a garage sale. And he came to the garage sale. And he did other things that I was enamored with that I found out. But I couldn't be more enamored with that and he I was in Planet And I believe we actually made a Roddy McDowell reference uh, earlier. In Planet. the show? You, you did. In the episode? No, you made a reference to just in this podcast. What did I say? To Roddy McDowell, because you were talking about Malcolm McDowell. Oh, Malcolm, I almost said and Roddy, Roddy McDowell. McDowell was planning to be. Isn't that amazing? Age. I knew it. That's, by the way, not as much anymore because you don't meet people like that. But 20 some odd years ago, yeah, it was different when Hollywood. We did it, there were still people from that era of Hollywood. From old Hollywood. Yeah, that were still. And what working. I liked about that scene is I liked that there was no explanation. There wasn't, let's go to the shoemaker. Right. Let's, you know, you're well, just. It was that, obvious. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love that. I love the, the, the lack of exposition. Now comes the part I was going to talk about. Okay. And that is um, Larry's on the street walking along in his campers. Because mm -hmm. he puts them, that's why also part of the scene, not only getting them clean, but putting them, them on. on so that when off. he runs into and the Barney salesman. he runs salesman. into the shoe guy, yeah. Tim Bagley, and I don't think he had a name, shoe guy. And I think a momentous moment happened that people don't know about. I think this was the first scene ever where Larry laughed at the other performer. Uh -huh. Now he's done that. You know how I know? You watch it again. You can hear the beginnings, his lead into his laugh. And then the next time when he says, uh, shame on you or what? Anyhow, the next time you hear the first laugh as is cut. Mm -hmm. And I know this was the first time that I noticed him. Laughing as if, he, well, by if the way, something's funny, he laughed. No, it's not a matter of that. When he sees someone 
doing something that he created and he knows it's silly and absurd and hysterical, he finds that so damn funny. Like he can't get enough of that. So he laughs uncontrollably. And it's not an ego thing. It's just, it's just like never in my wildest imagination did I think it would come to this moment. And so that to me, you don't see that on screen, but I think if you watch the shows, a lot of times we cut away from Larry right when he laughs or is about to laugh. His laughter for me as a performer, his laughter uh, is joyous and making him laugh is one of the great joys of my life. But I will say this when you, and this is just something when you and I are in a scene with him and he laughs, we don't break. No. No, no, Once by the way, we did. we'll talk uh, about that yes, when it comes. When that episode comes up, yes. <laughs> and I couldn't, uh, how can I help myself? Yeah. Um, but anyhow, I think that moment is the first time. It's more of a moment for us. Yeah. But know that uh, Larry David laughs a lot. And this was actually, because it's all the beginning, things are, are being laid right. out. He has had, since then, so many altercations with salespeople. Oh, my God. You know. Yes. So many. So these, and by these, the way, a lot of them involve him being, returning something. Returning something. So these themes and by the way, are being set. there's nothing funnier than anyone who's funny returning something. Right. And they have the altercation. Yes. And, and, uh, and by the way, he makes that spinning noise that a little kid makes before he, yeah, I don't know what that's called, but he, he uh, it's a kid. It's a Bronx spin, cheer. A Bronx cheer and walks off, which also was his. Very Kim funny. Kim was hysterical. Yeah, it was very, role. very funny. Um, and then after that, they're home. Yep. And this, this, I, I love this, this piece right here when they're saying that, they, they're waiting for the call from Ted and Mary about going to the concert. And it's not happening. And they're sitting there just like pathetic, the two of them, waiting. And um, Larry says, At least lie to us. Right. Something. You know, call us and lie. Yeah. I want to sit here like schmucks. Yeah. A lie is a gesture. It's a courtesy. It's a little respect. I love that so much because that's his brain, you know, that at least if you're lying, you're making you know an you're, effort. By the way, that's the New Yorkers. Yeah. You know where you stand with a that's New Yorker. That's right. A lot of people can't stand New Yorkers. I'm from Chicago, and I currently live in L.A., but I, and I've lived in New You've York. You've lived in New York a lot. Yeah, yeah and I, I have never been down from the attitude of the New York people. Now, I want to talk about that same scene and two things for me that I found fascinating. Number one, this is Larry David who created Seinfeld. He's sitting in the living room with his wife, and they're listening on a boombox. Right, right. That struck me as funny. Secondly, when Cheryl Lee— They're listening Lee, to Paul Simon. Yes. Yeah. Still crazy after all these years. Right. Which I know that song means a lot to Larry. It means a lot to me, too, and probably you, probably everyone listening. Mm-hmm. And this is my Larry David is my friend hilarious moment. He is singing along to the lyrics in a CD sleeve. Something— Oh, yeah. Uh, now, my feeling is— <laughs> He didn't know at that point that CDs had sleeves. He really had never used a CD before. And the idea that he's looking at the lyrics and singing along, crazy. Well, because he just discovered it. Yeah, well, then, no. The character and him at the same time. time. Really, you can do this? Oh, they got the words? Yeah, Like, I could see that, and that's where he went with that. So, for me, I love the lying thing that it's, you know. Yeah. But to me, also in watching these, I'm like, that is unbelievable. And I'm glad I didn't say anything because I would have said on the set, why is he listening to a boombox? Why can't we just pretend they're speakers? Well, again, I know very low budget. Yeah. So, all right. So they're, they're, the lying is a gesture. They, they're, they're waiting, waiting. And then, of course, they find out that it was the wrong night. Right. It was the wrong night. And then it's it's the he, oh the, he's he, the, he's back at Barney's returning the shirt, right. which he says is not he's not returning the shirt. It's a zipper problem. Yeah, I know. Which, is like, which just, he got away with, by the way. I know, why? Did, it's, it's so funny no, to me. No, no, no. It's so funny. I to would me. have done the same thing or something. Poor similar. Cheryl. Is what, I have a note here. Poor Cheryl. Well, yeah. I mean, Cheryl was just the long suffering Cheryl in this, and this was the beginning of that. And and of course, the real Cheryl Hines is not long suffering. No, the real Cheryl Hines. They'll call it out right away. Yeah, the real Cheryl Hines would have laughed in his face at everything he's done. The real, she's very different than the character she plays. Very much so. As a matter of fact, Cheryl Hines is n- known on our set as being one of the first people who will do whatever stupid thing I dare them to That's do. That's correct. She is. Who's the person who's known not to do the stupid Stop things? Stop it. You, Susie Essman, who is my dearest friend, will not go along with any of my nonsense. And no. that is, to this day, 
Wow. Occasionally. No, no, you have. Uh, blue Occasionally. Moons. There have been a few blue But moons. Cheryl is a very different character yes. than, well, we all are very My different from our characters. My favorite one she ever did, we were filming in a hospital, and she got on the, um, you know, when you make the announcement. The loudspeaker. Yeah, the way people make PA it. System. Dr. Johnson. And she did, and I dared her to, and she did it. Uh, Dr. Cock on fire. Dr. Cock on fire. There's a call for you. She did it and with then, a smile on her face. And then, by the way, repeated that line for many, many episodes d- during right. shooting oh, for yeah. many, many years. Oh, yeah. So, but, but in this, you really see this, what, what Cheryl has to deal with from the, from the being married to him. It's yes. just, it's a nightmare. D- do you find that I talk a lot about technical things that I notice? Because the Paul Simon concert, when he's there yeah. along with the grandmother, and it's funny that they're alone and it was, you know, it, it's so Larry's alone yeah, with Mary's mother. I don't understand mother. the reason why Cheryl's not there. He said he said uh, cousins came in from out I know, of town. But we and didn't it's know bullshit. That. Yeah. yeah, it is. I don't know what the story is with that. Unless he wanted to be alone with Mary, which would, maybe something was cut out that I don't remember. But what I noticed from that is the sound design. You the, the sound design for the singing and the way the people are applauding was such a bizarre concoction. Yeah, see, I don't that, notice these things I know, at all. I know, it takes me right out of it. Yeah. It's like, I, that's that's a concert in space. I've never heard anything like and that. And so then Larry ends up at the concert with Mary's mother, who ends up falling asleep on his shoulder. Which I believe and I love, and that's sweet. It's a sweet ending. Very sweet. Yeah. Very, very sweet. And pathetic at the same time, right. you but, know. Yeah, but sweet. Like, and, and my that's, life. That's the episode. Well, as per usual, I very much enjoyed spending time with you. As I did you, darling, and we'll do it again because we have uh, a lot more to go. And we're working Monday together. Yes, I, we I, are. I'm filming. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah, and just so people know, and we've said it before, we are in the middle of shooting, as we're doing this, shooting season 12. Season 12. So for wow. us to go back and see all these beginnings, is I, I'm loving it. It's so much fun to watch. I could vomit every time I watch an episode. For mostly because of me, but for a myriad of reasons. Why? I do not. First off, I don't enjoy watching myself. It's very uncomfortable. Oh, okay. But but are you enjoying watching the episodes? No. I am. Because I, I haven't there, seen them. But here's the thing. I was there when we filmed it. I was there when we were working on the cuts. Yeah. I don't like going back. I just don't. I can't stand it. And by the way, for example, I've got this movie Babylon that I'm in. Jamie Chazelle directed it. Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt. I'll never see it. Mm, I don't watch. The only thing I watch that I'm in is Curb because I, it tickles me and I enjoy it so much. And the character makes me laugh. Hold on. I agree but, with you. But, Even though I've seen cuts of it before, I'll watch it when it airs. That's the first time. And I'm creatively involved more than just being an actor. But <laughs> but let me explain to the audience what's yeah. so difficult for us and for all actors and even crew members. When you're watching, we go back and we watch, you're like, oh, that's the day that such and such happened. And yeah. that's the day that, the boom that, 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 that I, I got sick from the lunch. And that's the, you know, like, yes. all, it, we They're see different present. things. So I, so now going back and seeing these things 22 years later, it's, it's delightful to me because I'm not thinking about that. And by that. the way, I told you I can remember everywhere I was sitting. Yeah, I don't. The times that where Crest Service was located. Isn't that funny? Of I course know, you do, Jeff. I know where every Crest Service lo- was located on every shoot. And I, most of the time I remember what I ate. And we'll see you next time. We will. Next time. <laughs> wait, wait, at that moment. And we'll see you next and time. And we'll see you next on time. On the adventures of, of Jeff and Susie and Curb Your Enthusiasm. The history of Curb Your Enthusiasm starring Susie and Jeff. Not Jeff and Susie. You go before me. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Talk to you soon. 